Hi everyone, I've had a few questions this winter about the hip being square versus counted and versus rotated. So I wanted to give a few explanations on what I consider each of these to be. Let's start off with square as it's the easiest to explain and give reference to the other two. If you put a level across the left and right ASIS and you draw a 90 degree line out from this, it'll face the same direction as the outside ski. This is what I call square, and it's in relation to the outside ski as this is the ski we balance against. An easy way to see square without imagining lines is from side on. If you cannot see the inside ASIS or the PSIS from the side, then this means that the hip is square. If you can see the inside ASIS here, this means the hip is counted. If you can see the inside PSIS from this angle, this means that the hip is rotated. People get confused with tip lead and hip counter. Tip lead doesn't directly lead to hip counter. In fact, you can have a rotated hip and still have tip lead. When you flex the inside leg, this will naturally come out in front, unrelated to the orientation of the direction of the hip. How much tip lead one has can be controlled from flexion or extension at the knee in this example. Obviously the stiffness of the boots and the ski will limit how much this can happen. Tip lead can happen from having counter at the hip too, but tip lead doesn't necessarily relate to hip counter in all situations. So it's not the best to look at if you want to get a reference. You should look at the two ASISs and draw a 90 degree line from them to relate it to the outside ski. From front on square looks like this and if the line faces outside of the turn from this then it's counted and if it faces to the inside then this is a rotated position of the hip. In reality being square is just a fleeting moment which is why I personally just use ranges and use a general term for having the hips facing more with the skis or less with the skis. So in reality what I group into being square could have a slight bit of hip rotation or a slight bit of hip counter. Here is an example of extreme hip counter for a comparison. This is just for demonstration purposes and no one should actually try and ski like this. It would be a terrible idea, but just so you can see the difference between the two. Knowing what parts of the body create what movements in relation to skiing is very important in being able to analyse your own skiing and other people's skiing, which is why we created a biomechanics instructional on our all access pass. If being able to analyse and start comparing movements and techniques to help you improve your skiing is interesting to you, then you should check this movie out because it's a great foundation to start with. I'll see you guys next time.